What is up guys? Welcome back to The Brave Angler. And today we got a how-to video. Uh, it seems a lot of the people that have been subscribing lately are new to bass fishing, new to bait casters. So today we are doing a complete breakdown on how to set up your bait caster. The first thing with bait casters is I struggled a lot when I first got mine. Um, I was always a spinning reel kind of guy. And uh, when I finally made the jump to bait casters, it was frustrating because there's a lot of nuances that no one really talks about that make all the difference. And that's, you kind of have to keep everything in mind. You have what lures you're gonna throw, uh, what line you're gonna use, and all that's gonna dictate what rod and reel you use as well. There are several types of rods and reels that you can go about. For example, this reel right here is centrifugal braking. That's all gonna be based on preference and different brands use different uh, braking setups. But um, we're gonna be covering, you know, combination of magnetic and centrifugal braking. Uh, we even got digital um, assist braking, you know, with the Corrado DCs and stuff. And, you know, all this is gonna be a matter of preference but setting them up properly doesn't really matter so much about the reels. It's gonna be more based on what you're doing with it. Your rod actually plays a large part and your lure selection plays a large part, how you're gonna set these up, you know, cause unfortunately there is no one fits all, you know, like that's the nice thing about spinning reels is you can kind of throw whatever you want and you're not gonna pay too much in uh, consequences for that. But when it comes to bait casters, it matters so much. For example, this lure right here, with the weight of the hook and the weight of the actual lure, you're maybe looking at like 3 sixteenths, maybe a quarter ounce. So right now, this is my weightless setup. You know, if I'm ever throwing just weightless soft plastics, this is the rod I use. And it's a 7.3 medium, fast action. But if you notice, a lot of rods actually print what they're rated for. I don't know if you can see that with the glare. But this rod right here is rated for uh, 8 to 14 pound line and 3 16 to 1 half ounce weight. So that's the entire lure. Um, including your terminal tackle, which is why I selected this rod for that. Also, this has 12 pound line on it, because like I said, this rod is rated for eight to 14 pound. Um, this, there is some experimentation. I just find um, 12 pound works well for me for what I am doing with this particular rod. If y'all are just getting into bait casting and you want to be able to, you know, do your very basic stuff like Texas rig, chatter baits, jigs, that kind of stuff, I would suggest getting a medium heavy uh, fast action rod. Here is a 7.3 medium heavy. It's rated for eight to 20 pound line. And it is for a quarter to three quarters of an ounce weight. So this is a three eighths ounce weight and my terminal tackle. And then I throw a lower on here. This is my like worm dragging, you know, my Texas rig rod. That plays such a big part in making sure that you are matching what your rod is for. Like I said, if it's your first bait casting rod, I would suggest you get a medium heavy, um, fast action over seven foot, um, just because it's probably the most versatile with all the bass catching techniques. You can throw spinner baits, you can throw chatter baits, jigs, um, Texas rigs, you know, pretty much 90%. And um, this is a graphite rod. I'm not gonna really cover uh, glass or composite rods because I don't really crank. Um, if you're into crank baits and that kind of stuff, I would suggest going that route um, and just follow the specs based on what lures you're throwing. Now, why is this important? Um, so when this comes to the actual setup of your reel, this is very important. And the reason being is because this is the manufacturer's what it is best suited for. And it, a lot of it has to do with how the rod loads. For all y'all that don't know, the rod loading is when you go to cast, the weight of the lure actually bends the tip of the rod. And you're actually using that tip of a rod loading to slingshot your bait. So what that kind of does is if your lure is too light for this rod, you're gonna get back slap. 
And what that means is that it will actually load at the end of your cast and then back slap causing it to slack line and it to overrun in your reel. And then if you throw too heavy a lure for your rod, you risk the integrity of your rod or snapping your rod. We're gonna get into actually setting it up once we decide on what line and what lure we're gonna be throwing. So this right here is lined with 15 pound fluorocarbon. I'm throwing a 3 8 ounce chatterbait on it and it just has a soft plastic crawl. This probably brings it up to a half ounce of total weight, which is perfectly within the range. And this will allow the rod to load prospectively for this lure. Now, when it comes to your braking setup, like I said, the reel, it does not matter, but this is a centrifugal braking uh, reel. So the way that this reel works with centrifugal brakes is it actually has this little beetle arm opening and you select how much brakes you want right now it is set to three and a half i like my reels kind of loose because um, i use thumb control to really get accurate casts but when you're first starting out you're not going to necessarily have that skill set yet and it can be very frustrating backlashing every cast so i'm going to teach you guys kind of how to set up your reels to mitigate your backlashes but it is very important that you go through those first couple steps and selecting your lures that you're going to be throwing and then finding a rod that is rated for that weight because like i said you're just going to set yourself up for disaster and i'll get into that kind of stuff here in a second now some reels like this kvd loose um, has both magnetic and centrifugal which I think it was actually really smart of loose to do. This was actually my first bait casting reel. I think it's great because you get the centrifugal brakes um, as well as you can use the magnetic for fine adjusting those centrifugal brakes. Now you don't get as many like uh, my 13 fishing all have six pins in the centrifugal which basically what centrifugal braking does is as the spool spins it kicks pins out to slow it down and you can increase the amount of brakes that are engaged by activating them. While magnetic increases the magnetic force, so as the spool spins, there's a magnet on the actual spool, it would actually slow it down magnetically. And the great thing about the combination ones is you get those centrifugal brakes, even though it doesn't have as many, and then you have the magnetic on top. And there are advantages to all types of brakes. Um, with centrifugal brakes, if they get wet, they're not going to function. So if for whatever reason your rod falls in the water or something like that, you're gonna have to work that water out um, for the brakes to work properly again, while magnetic does not have that issue. Also, most magnetic brakes are on the outside of the reel that allows you to fine tune much quicker versus like with a 13 fishing, I have to open the reel every time that I want to adjust the brake. Now, your line selection does play a part in it too. Um, when you think of fluorocarbon and mono, they have memory. What memory is, is that when the line stays spooled up, it will actually take the form of where it's at in that spool. Versus with braid, there is no memory. However, braid is kind of a, an interesting topic on bait casters. Me personally, I wouldn't use anything less than 35 pound braid on a bait caster. And the reason being is because braid is much thinner than fluorocarbon or mono. So it's not so much, oh, well, you don't need 35 pound. I don't have it because I'm pulling 35 pound fish out of the water or you know anything like that. I have it because of the diameter of the braid allows it to sit on top of each other much more nicely and I don't have to worry about embedding into the spool um, which can cause issues and I've had those issues with 20 pound braid. Now for some of you guys uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this reel on YouTube. Uh, I actually in the same deal um, I got this one as well as a combo for a really good price so I couldn't really say no to it. This is a digital braking control and there's only four settings on here and then you fine tune with your spool tension knob. I would not suggest getting these if you're a beginner. One, they're very expensive. This reel I believe retails new for $2.59 in most places and it's not 
going to keep you from backlashing. For the most part, it does an excellent job in keeping it from overrunning, but there is still some skill, and if you rely on the chip in here that controls your braking, you're gonna find some issues and you're not gonna get the full use out of this reel that which the electronic braking allows you to have. Now, we're gonna go over the parts of a reel before we start getting into actually how to fine tune it and cast it. We'll use this reel because it has a lot of different uh, features on it that might match yours. The first, you got your crank. This knob next to your crank is the spool tension knob. And what this does is it actually pushes against the spool to kind of stabilize that spool or slow it down. When you're first starting out, you'll probably have yours a little tighter because it helps alleviate some of the thumb control that you're gonna eventually develop. But as you progress in getting better, I would suggest loosening it up. Like I said, I, I run my reels pretty loose, but like I said, I rely more on my thumb than I do on the spool tension knob. Next, if you have magnetic braking, you're going to have this little knob over here. And this knob on this particular spool uh, the more I go counterclockwise, the less braking I have. The more I go clockwise, the more braking I have. And then for y'all that have a combination or centrifugal brakes, this pin right here that allows you to take this cover off. Um, while others have, uh, with centrifugal braking, they'll have like other switches like right here on the back of the reel to open this one. So it's gonna depend based on what reel you have, but like I said, uh, you'll have to read your uh, owner's manual to find out how to take yours off. Now see, with magnetic, there's the magnets for the magnetic braking. For y'all that have centrifugal, typically what you'll have are these pins. And these pins, when they're in towards the center of the spool, they're off. When they're clicked out at the outside of the spool, they're on. So as you can see, I have two on two off. Now, the reason this is, is because I run mine typically loose. So I rely more on the centrifugal brakes on this reel than I do necessarily anything else. I just fine tune with the magnetic for this reel. One thing that I will say is when you first set up your rod and your reel, um, no matter what brakes you have, I would turn them on high because you don't want to ruin that brand new uh, spool. And with your lure attached, we'll set everything high, nice and tight. And then we're gonna slowly loosen them uh, until we have that perfect cast ability. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go over some casts. So there's a couple different casts that you can do and we're gonna go over each one of them. All right guys, so the first cast, which a lot of you guys are gonna start doing is you're gonna use your dominant hand, right? With the, with the reel out to the side. And it's called a side roll cast. All right, this cast, all you're doing is with your bait hanging, you're going to swing it around so that it's a circle and you'll see the rod load. And based on how hard you swing it and how big your circle is, the rod will load more. And what you do, you just push your full release button at the back, holding it with your thumb. All you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your elbow tucked in this is gonna be your pivot point. And like I said, you're gonna swing the bait around, load the rod, and then release. Just like that. Now, this is probably the easiest and most basic uh, cast for a bait caster. Now, for you guys that are switching from spinner reels, the overhead stuff, that actually takes a little bit more skill with a bait caster. So I would definitely wait on doing that until you get this cast down. And as you're casting, you're using your thumb to kind of slow down that spool, just feather it just a little bit. And then when the bait is about to hit the water, you do a hard stop with your thumb. With the spool tension knob, that will help uh, alleviate some of the dependence on that. That is your first basic cast. So next is gonna be more for you guys that are into spinning rods. Um, when I'm trying to bomb a cast, it's more what I do. And that is, I actually bring from in front of me, the rod tip up and around, 
and load the rod behind me, but it's still a round motion. But the only difference is, is I kind of bring it up to 11 o'clock as I'm casting forward and it looks like this. Like I said, I would not start with that cast. Um, it takes a little bit better timing. Now, one thing I will say is that you guys want to rely on the rod. Do not try and muscle this. If you muscle it, you'll cause overrun and back slap from your rod. So, like I said, that's why it's so important to choose the right rod for what lures you are throwing. All right, we're gonna get the chest mount on and we'll get into tuning your bait caster for the best castability once your lures and all that are set up. You want your bait to fall. I mean, that might be a little loose for starting out. I like mine slightly looser than that. That's about, that's nice and tight. So I would start pretty much there. And basically when the bait hits the water, you don't want any overrun in your spool. So just like that. All right, now for brakes, we're gonna tighten these all the way up. Now you want it probably about, I would say probably about a foot from your tip when you're casting. As you wrap it around for that sidearm, it loads the rod. Go ahead and cast out right quick. And as you guys can see, even without any thumb control, with it set up like that, no backlash. Now I only cast probably like maybe 10 yards away from the boat using the rod there here it is again now obviously we don't want to we don't want to be working that hard all day so we're going to loosen up click by click until we can get where we want it i'm letting my thumb go and then as the bait hits the water hard stopping it no backlash so now i want to show you guys what it looks like when your brakes are too loose for your setup all right see right there there was that overrun that means our brakes are too loose so we're going to tighten them up a little bit Let's try it again still oh still a little bit of overrun but as you guys can see i'm not really doing any thumb control and that's because my spool tensioner is still pretty tight All right, so I would say the brakes are pretty in tune there. So now that we got our brakes set, and we probably have them set at uh, pretty close to minimum, but we got our centrifugals half on. So someone that uh, doesn't have those, you know, you might have your brakes set all the way up to half. As you get better about controlling with your thumb, but you see just how easy it is. Like this is pretty much how I keep my, how fast my bait normally drops. That's the pace I like. And by setting up our brakes, everything matches the lure, the line, the rod, you know, just by setting up the brakes, you know, all I have to do is stop it when the, when the bait's about to hit the water. Now, the advantage to bait casters and why I kind of fell in love with them and have gone almost completely away from spin reels except for from my finesse stuff is you have a lot more control and accuracy of where your bait's going. So for example, that we'll do as far as we can cast with it. So probably about 30 yards. And then what we'll do is like, okay, so it's set up to go 30 yards. Let's say I only want to cast, you know, because the bank's right there, you know, at 15 yards, I can feather my thumb and gently put it in the water at 15. To me, that ability to be that accurate is really what makes the bait caster shine. But setting them up to where they are working properly can be daunting, I will admit. So now let's say, just for example, all right, cause like with a nice reel like this, you know, I, I understand not everyone can afford these, but you know, let's say you're maxing out the brakes on your spool. Cause I do have a Lose Custom Pro, which is a $60 reel, only has magnetic braking. Uh, I do have one of those that I have to keep, even with maxing out the brakes 
it still overruns. And what we'll do is we will turn the centrifugal braking off. So now it's just magnetic. And we'll just say, cause I mean, the, the magnetic braking on this is a little bit better than on the Classic Pro. We'll just say that this right here, this brake setting is the max out of a uh, budget friendly reel. So now what we're gonna do, and you know, we're getting that overrun. We don't want a bird's nest. So we're actually gonna tighten this to where it barely will move. You might even have to assist it a little bit. Yeah. There we go. All right, so with it, if you adjust it to where it barely moves, even with your brakes maxed out, what you'll do, see how it improved it? Still got good casting distance. So maybe we go to that click. But like I said, it's not ideal, but see, it's, it's barely moving. I even have to bounce it a little bit to get it to go down, but it won't fault you on the casting distance. I'm still getting good distance. You know, we'll just uh, tighten it up one more click or a little bit more if yours doesn't have the audible clicks. Try casting again. See, almost nothing. And we only lost a little bit of distance. So even with budget friendly gear, you can, uh, you can fine tune it. Like I said, that way is not very conventional, but if you only have so much to spend, you can still make that stuff work so you can be out there fishing. Um, that's why I typically do spend a little bit more on my setup is you get a little bit more fine tunability or tunability. I don't know. You can fine tune it better and see like pretty much with minimal effort, you know, just eyeballing it. I was able to get the same results. That's all there is to fine tuning your, your reel. It's just, if you're getting an overrun, tying up the brakes, if you're not, loosen up the brakes and use your spool tensioner and then this is without using any thumb control well guys i hope you found this tutorial helpful uh, if you guys have any questions leave them down in the comments uh, we're always happy to help the biggest thing about bait casters is make sure that the lure the line the rod match because you can fine tune the bait caster to where it takes literally no effort uh, and mitigate backlashes, just as I showed. Really, as you get better at using your thumb to control the spool and all that kind of stuff, loosen those brakes up. When you first start out, I would suggest getting like large rolls of very cheap line, you know, because uh, you're still going to bird's nest. Bird's nest is an they're inevitable, especially when you start getting into other techniques like skipping and all that kind of stuff. You're you're going to. But just make sure if you change your lure that you go back through these steps because the lure weight is going to change everything. You know, very like typically I have enough rods to where I have a rod designated for any type or weight of lure. But when you only have one rod, you know, when you're first starting out, you may need to readjust, go from the chatterbait to the spinnerbait. Definitely recalibrate, retune your reel so you're mitigating those backlashes and you're having more fun with more time fishing. All right, guys, if you like this content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Now go catch a fish.